Today, we are going to cover closing. You guys with me today? There we go. We got some smiles. I'm just making sure we got a pulse in this group. I can tell when somebody's been getting beat up in the field a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like I can, I can tell. I can tell. So we're gonna we're gonna work today on some closing, fun stuff. Closing, right? ABC, always be closing. Coffees for closers, all that fun stuff. So let's talk about some foundational concepts. I'll give you some tips for closing. And then what we can do is we can open it up to any situations, any rebuttals, uh, rather objections you've been getting recently uh, that we can handle here together. So, um, and you could go back. Uh, We have uh, a a closing recorded. Um, So I'm going to focus on some similar yet different things today. The first thing I do want to talk about, however, which is a reiteration of what we've covered before, is that closing starts on the phones right so that's where you set the tone in terms of the energy and control that you're going to display throughout the presentation if you have a soft phone presentation you're going to get chewed up in the presentation itself i promise you people whether they're conscious of it or not will sense your level of control and professionalism when it comes to your phone set. So there's another group that I work with out West for AO and they were having uh, both a closing and a show ratio issue. And what's interesting is that we, we did show last week, we're gonna do closing tomorrow, uh, a Friday. What's interesting is that fixing their phone presentation had a 7% overall team. Some, some people increased by 20% that week in closing. I found that to be fascinating because I was always able to say, you know, closing starts on the phones, but I never had any data to support that. Well, now I do. That the phones can have such a dramatic effect on your closing for some people up to 20%. Now, this was a person that was closing 15%, so they were pretty freaking bad but this that's a pretty big change even seven percent you figure seven percent over a hundred presentations that's seven more deals at a thousand alp per sale it's another another seven grand in business on the books that's a that, that could be the difference between convention or no convention first place second place so it starts on the phones and what i found is the best attitude to have is one of a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. Like somebody, like you are a licensed professional. And when I call, which I haven't seen a doctor in in years because I loathe modern medicine. But anyways, that's when you call the doctor, they don't, hey, yeah, sure. Let me check his schedule. You can come in Monday at three or Tuesday at six or this. It's like, this is his availability. This is the appointment. Either you take the appointment or you don't get your meds and you die. It's pretty, that's pretty much how they rock. You have to have the same kind of swagger when it comes to setting appointments with these members or child safe or will kit or whatever it may be. Like it's, you have to border on being just a little bit of a bully, just a little bit. I don't say that run and go get a PR complaint. I'm saying a little bit of a bully. I'm not saying be mean. I'm saying just lead the horse to the water and gently nudge its head down until it starts to drink, right? So a good example of that is, hi, is this Joe? Hi, Joe, this is Mike Russin with American Income. I handle your benefits through the Teamsters. How are you today? Good. The reason why I'm giving you a call is they actually sent you a letter about this. You returned a little three by five reply card. I need to get you all the information and get you caught up with all the other members. So Joe, what's that, Joe? You don't remember? That's exactly why I'm calling. As soon as we hang up, I'm going to send you a picture of your three by five card. Sometimes it takes us a couple months to get caught up with you. So I apologize. We work with over 40,000 groups. So Joe, like I was saying before, Um, I need to verify your information. It looks like you wrote down your address as blah, blah, blah. 
okay, your uh, your date of birth is blah, blah, blah. And then it looks like Mary is the beneficiary for your small life policy. Is that correct? Awesome. So you're one of the last members to receive this benefits package. One of the last ones. And I need to get you caught up with everybody else in the Teamsters. So I have some time. I carve some time out. Um, and I don't care if you've got zero appointments. You're booked. You're booked. Oh, I can meet anytime, Joe. You just tell me that nobody wants to sit with you if you sound like that. Why aren't you busy? That's like suspicious, right? So, Joe, like I could be looking at a blank schedule. So, Joe, I assume you're at work right now. Okay, so I've got some time I carved out for you tonight at 6 p.m. Is that going to work for you and Mary? No, Joe, unfortunately, what we did originally is we mailed you the letter. And like the letter said, it's my job to get you caught up with all the other members. You need to make sure that you understand how this works with what you have. So I would love to mail it. That would send me time, but I do need to review it for, with you. So this is what I'm going to do, Joe. You sound like a pretty busy guy. I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to put you down for six o'clock tonight, and I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version. As long as you don't tell anybody else, I'll make it quick for you. 10, 15 minutes, I'll be in and out of your hair quicker than your favorite shampoo. How's that sound, Joe? Great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab me, uh, actually do me a favor, Joe, grab me a pen and a piece of paper. I'm going to give you my Zoom link. You've used Zoom, be Zoom before? Does your wife know how to use Zoom? Okay, perfect. I'm going to give you my Zoom ID and I'm going to get your email. I'm also going to email it to you. Make sure you let your wife know. In fact, let me get your wife's email too, so I can CC her so she knows about the appointment tonight and book the appointment. I don't want to spend more time on phones because that's not why we're here today. But if you're not setting appointments like that, you're, that's why part of the reason why you're getting chewed up in the house, but more importantly, you're chewing up leads. Like leads are not cheap at all. And if you're soft on the phones because you're afraid of, well, I've never been a controlling person and I've never, you need to figure it out. Like now you need to figure it out. Like part of sales is being an actor. There are days where I show up and I've got 30 final interviews to do. And the last thing I want to do is say the same shit I've said 5,000 times before to 30 different people and listen to 30 different life stories and 30 different, but you got to bring the energy, the enthusiasm and the passion anyways, you have to. So you have to learn how to be an actor or an actress on the phones and in the house. So have professionalism in control. I don't, I know many scripts out there say, what time do you typically, when are you and Mary typically home? I've personally never asked people what their schedule is. I tell them what mine is and where I can fit them in. I would suggest that you make that slight adjustment to your phone presentation and probably the major adjustment in regards to your tonality and level of control. Here's another thing that you could do that also will help you close more deals. Is Ashley your guys's? You guys have an Ashley? Okay. Just want to make sure before I let her in. Not like uh, somebody early for group or something like that. Okay. Should that? Okay, cool. So what was I saying? Oh, another thing that will help you. I think that this is a cool little psychological trip. I don't, a trick. I don't think I've given you guys this before, but it's really, it's, it'll, not only help your show ratio, but it'll help your closing ratio because it's going to increase your level of professionalism. I want you to create an, uh, a Google or Gmail, Yahoo, probably use Gmail or Outlook account and create yourself your, your own assistant. So many of you probably don't have an assistant, a personal assistant yet. Now you do. Create an email address and she or he can look and sound and act however you want. This is your own imaginary assistant. And what you're going to do after every set or every set is you're going to email and you're going to say something to the effect of, Joe, this email serves as a confirmation of your appointment with benefits supervisor, Michael Russin tonight at 6 p.m. Below is a, the Zoom link and the Zoom ID. Please be prompt. And make sure that you show up for the appointment. Mr. Russell's time is important as we know yours is too. If you have any issues with the Zoom link, please don't hesitate to email me back. Signed, Samantha, blah, blah, blah. Billy, Joe, whatever. Doesn't matter. Now you've got your own 
personal assistant and they're free. So it makes you, it just boosts the legitimacy and will help you with your show ratio and closing. So that's all for the phones for now. But it's important that we cover that because if you don't set appointments properly, there's no, you're not, what are you going to close? It's, nobody's going to show up. <laughs> and then you're sitting there staring at a blank computer screen. All right, let's talk closing. So I believe personally that um, from the phones and really even before then, you, if you're having trouble closing deals, I would encourage you to analyze your level of belief when it comes to this business. Like you need to believe that they need it more than you need to get it out to them. Like what I've found from the best salespeople in this company is that they're not even very good salespeople. They just serve the shit out of everybody they meet. They just serve everybody that they meet. They're very good. So like, I'm not blown away by a lot of the verbiage that I hear used by some of these people. That's two things. They set a lot of appointments, they give a lot of presentations and they serve every single person. They try in their heart of hearts, they believe they're doing what's in the best interest of every single client every single time. So I would also encourage you before we get into specific closing tactics to analyze your level of belief. And what changes your level of belief is either your first death claim, and if you haven't gotten one of those yet, is going online and watching life insurance testimonials. This isn't car sales. This isn't some kind of a fitness program. This is like if Joe doesn't, the, the way I thought was, if Joe doesn't get this set up and he dies, his two little boys will suffer as a result. So I took almost a really enormous amount of personal responsibility in every presentation. Well, I'm sitting down with a senior. Well, if Billy doesn't get this set up, his poor 75-year-old widow is going to suffer when he dies. Because I've got savings. Yeah, well, Bill, what happens when you're laid up in the hospital and it takes you a year to die from your cancer? Or you go to a nursing home where you drool on yourself all day. You don't know anybody or what the hell is going on. And they come after your savings, your investments, any gifts that you've given over $10,000 in the past five years. They'll come for everything. And then what's your wife going to bury you with? Like you have to be so convinced that there's nothing else. What, what are they going to tell you? You can't, I can't afford it. You can't afford not to have this. Well, we have to think about it. Here's a thought exercise, Joe. Think about a blue elephant. Okay, you see how easy that was? That's all the time it takes to think about this. So let's get your foot in the door today, at least with the basic program. And what I'll do is I'll make a reminder in my phone to call you three months from now and we'll increase it when maybe gas prices are a little bit lower. There's a sale made in every single house. And if you're not closing, it's because you're buying their bullshit. It's that simple. It's that simple. You, I mean, it sucks now. We don't have the advantage of being in the house, but I used to look around and you might be able to see some of it on camera and call people out for shit. Two brand new vehicles sitting outside. You tell me you can't afford a hundred bucks a month, but you got a brand new Dodge Ram and you got a brand new Jeep. Who the hell is going to pay for those when you die, Joe? I would call people out. If people are smoking cigarettes on my Zoom, we're going to have a conversation about cigarettes. How many packs a week are you smoking right now, Joe? Six. Okay. Here, Joe, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to, not only are we going to protect your family today, but I'm also going to help you improve your health. What's a pack of cigarettes go for? Anybody know? I, I legitimately don't know right now. I don't smoke. What, what are cigs go for? Anybody know? How much? No smokers on here? Let's say 15 bucks. 15 bucks a pack. We go from six packs a week to five packs a week. That's a $60 a month program. Or we go to four packs a week from six, which I think is better. That's a $120 a month program. So Joe, that's exactly the price I've quoted you here, the investment level for your family. And all it takes is from you going from six packs of cigarettes to four. But some of you 
are too afraid to have those types of conversations because you're afraid of getting somebody a little upset. Well, let me ask you a question. What's worse, them getting a little bit upset for a second and then coming to their senses and writing you a check every single month for the rest of your their existence on this planet or them dying and little Joey and Susie having to be raised by some babysitter that doesn't give a shit about them because mom has to go work 80 hours a week. What do you prefer? For real, you need to examine your belief level when it comes to this deal. We're not selling cars. Somebody don't buy a car and Joe dies the next day. Mary's not going to be like, oh my God, we didn't buy the car. No. There's she going to be thrilled they didn't make that investment. This, you know how many times when I worked in the Pittsburgh office, we would get calls at the front desk from widows screaming and crying into the phone. Please tell me we got something set up and all we have is their 3000 AD and D because Joe wanted to think about it. Or they couldn't afford it. Bullshit. Bullshit. There's nothing more important. Wait until you get that call. Please tell me we got something, please. Uh, I could check and see if you got your 3000 AD and D. Next, you got to go on Facebook. She got to start a GoFundMe. They got to have a flipping spaghetti dinner down at the freaking VFW so that they could pay for his funeral. Where is your belief level? Because it, it's too easy in this business to just dial, 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 present, 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 and go on autopilot and start to forget about why you're doing what you're doing. You know why so many people fail at making money in life? You know why there's a 99% and a 1% no? It doesn't have to do with your genitals or your hair color or your skin color. I'll tell you what it has to do with is it has a lot to do with your hard work, your discipline, your focus, but it also has a lot to do with your intentions. It has a lot to do with your intentions. What I've found is I've always made the most money when I give a shit about the people that I'm working with, for, or alongside of. I've always made the most money when I've cared about my client more than I cared about my bottom line. Always in AIL, when I stopped worrying about what my paycheck was going to be every week, my paychecks went from, you know, 1500, 2000 a week to 12, 15, $20,000 a week. My income went from $250,000 a year to $850,000 a year within one year. And what it was, was a mindset shift was I'm just going to serve the shit out of every client every essay, every agent, every MGA that works for me. That's when it changed. Why am I telling you this? What's your mindset and mentality and intention from your heart in every single presentation? Are you looking at dollar signs on the screen or do you have your rent in the back of your head or your car payment in the back of your head? Let me tell you something. Desperation is a stinky perfume. People can smell that shit from a mile away. You need to stop worrying because all of that will take care of itself if your intentions are in the right place, if your heart's in the right place. So I would encourage you to, before you go into every single presentation, to stop and realign yourself with what your purpose is and what your intention is with that client. Because if it's in the right place, people will sense that. They'll know that you care about them. You'll know there's just an unspoken just sense like the universe God puts out there that people will just pick up on when you genuinely care about them and their family. So that's where closing starts is your heart attitude towards people in the clientele. Because I've seen people not give a shit about the client, sell a lot of life insurance policies, but then you know what they deal with? Quality issues, bad retention, no bonuses, reduced advances. They don't qualify. You, can, you, you can't out hustle. I'm telling you right now, this, this company, we got we, Warren Buffett, for God's sake, 
invest in this company. We got the Cowboys and the Rangers. We got 17 million policyholders and we don't even advertise. This company, you can't out hustle the company. This company is so well, this is, this, this is, we got a white collar mafia running this company. There's, you can't out hustle. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about 72 years of innovation in this shit. You need to make sure that you're doing the right thing in every single circumstance. So let's set the stage that way. Now let's talk about specific closing techniques throughout the presentation. So your phone call is strong, step number one. Step number two, your intentions in every single presentation are on point. I would also add, do not prejudge. Some of the meanest, some of the meanest, nastiest sons of bitches I've ever sat down with were the biggest checks. Some of the gnarliest, meanest, biggest, bearded lumberjack back when I was 145 pounds with no beard going house to house in West Virginia. Some of the scariest dudes I ever met that would just sit there and look at me like I had just brought their daughter home late were the biggest checks. Never prejudge. Never prejudge. You want to go in as just with as clean of a just non judgmental, you know, because it's so funny back in the day when we were in the field, man, we used to pull up to nice neighborhoods and the trainees would get all excited. I'd be like, nah, mm -mm. we pull up to the trailer parks. That's where I got excited, right? You know what I'm talking about? That's, but that's, that's back in the field. So, rapport, the first part of the presentation. I'm, there's two objectives that I'm trying to accomplish in the rapport building process. I'm either going to get you, we're either going to relate together on something or I'm going to get you to laugh. It's going to be one of those two things, hopefully both. So we have that acronym for rapport, F-O-R-M, family, occupation, recreation, me. Why do we ask about, so family, number one is reconnaissance for relatives, we want to know. Later, when you try to tell me you don't know anybody for the child safe kits, I'm going to be like, no, 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 no. You said that you had 10 brothers and sisters over for Thanksgiving. Let's start with them. Who brings the freaking squash? All right, who, bring, who cooks the stuffing? We're going to start with their kids next. So reconnaissance is number one with family, but it also gets them to start to think about what's important to them. Occupation. I want to start to know in my head, okay, occupational hazards. This dude's a lineman. Not only do I know he makes a shit ton of money, that's a big check, but he's also in danger all the time when he's working. I'm gonna start to find, okay, we got two incomes in this house. I'm starting to pre-plan what this check size is gonna be. Again, we never know what the situation is, but generally speaking, I could have an idea when I start to ask about the occupation. So we wanna know occupational hazards, and what kind of money? Is this going to be a four or $500 check or is it going to be a two $300 check? Recreation. This is a good point of relatability. They hunt, you hunt, boom. There you go. Talk about hunting. They like the Bruins, you like the Bruins, boom. Talk about the Bruins. Like back to family. They have a big family, you got a big family, boom. Talk about the family. And parents, they got kids, you got kids. That's the easiest point of relatability on the planet. They could hate everything you hate and love everything you hate, or they hate everything you love and love everything you hate. And as long as you guys both got kids, you've got something to talk about all day long. You feel me? So if you got kids, that's you should be able to relate to everybody that has kids. But back to recreation. It gives us a point of relatability. They like to snowmobile, you snowmobile. They ski a shit ton, you skip boom. There you go. Or where are they spending their money? If Joe tells me that he goes caribou hunting in Montana, I know that's five to 10 grand easily every single year. You ain't telling me you can't afford this for your family. That's wild. Not going to happen. And then me, the M. Big mistake new reps make is they talk about themselves too much. You want to talk about yourself enough to show them that you're a human being and you relate to them, but no more than that. Because when you start talking about yourself too much, they're going to start to think, why the hell am I even sitting here with this person? Who is this? You know what I'm saying? So you want to just enough to get that relatability. So you have to have good rapport and good rapport 
can be as short as 10 to 15 minutes or even shorter, as long as I can make them laugh or I can get a point of relatability. Another big mistake new reps make is rapport goes too long. You can go too long with rapport. You know that, right? Because then they feel like you're their friend and they can just say no to you at the end of the presentation because they feel like you're buddies. Okay. And then you've wasted a shit ton of time. So a very easy tip for you is Joe, listen, man, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to have to stop you. Right. I could talk about hunting with you all day. I could talk about bass fishing with you all day long. In fact, next time I'm in Connecticut, you and I should go out together, but here's the thing, man. I've got a, I've got like three more union members right after you. I got to hustle through this. I got to make sure you get all your information. So if you don't mind, let's hop into the, into the uh, information I got for you here. So anyways, like I was saying before, my name's Mike Russ and the reason why I'm here, blah, 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 into your presentation. Very, and what that does is it allows you to establish control as well. Throughout the presentation, you should be looking for opportunities to establish control. You're the big swing. Well, we won't use that, but you're the, you're the alpha in the house. You're the alpha. I don't care if you're a tiny, young looking female. I don't care if you're a big brolic dude. Doesn't matter. You are the alpha in that situation. You are the educated, licensed professional. They don't know. They remember three problems everybody has. You ready for this? They don't have enough. They have the wrong type or they don't have any at all. They don't have enough. They have the wrong type or they don't have any of, at all. I've been in this, ten, I've been here a decade in this business, a decade. That's a third of my exist, more than a third of my existence on this planet. I've seen everything. I've probably had two circumstances out of tens of thousands of presentations where somebody was actually completely insured. One worked for the IRS. One was an oil field mogul, didn't need what we had. But 99.99999% of the time, they're underinsured, they have the wrong type, or they don't have any at all. Or they're silly, and they're relying on their work coverage, which isn't theirs to begin with. It's not theirs. They don't own it. Gone the second that their boss decides to cut benefits or cut them. So you have to have the approach that you're the licensed educated professional and they need to sit down and pay attention and listen to you. Big thing I, well, Mary's up. Yeah, I know Mary doesn't need to be in. I handle all this anyway. So she's, she's cooking dinner right now. Well, listen, Joe, I'm either going to need to borrow her for the next 10 minutes or we're going to have to reschedule this appointment and start all over again. Cause here's the thing. It's actually company policy that I sit down with the both of you because Mary is your beneficiary and I know you handle everything, but you're not handling this if, if you're dead. Okay. She's handling it. You're going to be dead. You're going to be in the earth. So I need to make sure that she knows how to make a claim on this 3000 AD and D in the event that you die. So can you grab Mary for me? Here's, well, I don't, I don't want to blow the presentation. It's already blown. When's the last time Mary was up doing other shit and then you got to check? And if you do, it's not sticking on the books. I can promise you that right now. Why don't want to blow the presentation? You already blew it. The only difference is now you're going to waste 45 minutes to an hour getting a, oh, we need to talk about it because she didn't sit her ass down at the table and listen. So you need to look for opera. You need to have a presentable environment. Joe and Mary, beep, beep, sitting down, looking at you on a screen. Not Joe's out back mowing the lawn. Not Mary's over here, but she's listening. Sitting down in front of you. Or don't run the presentation. Don't waste your time. Call and get in another house. Okay, so make sure you have a presentable environment. So rapport, presentable environment, mindset, okay. So going into the actual life insurance, it's very simple. Identify the problem, paint the picture of what their life looks like without the solution, and then provide the solution. So you need to be like an artist. 
This is an emotional sale. Another big mistake that rookies make and analytical people make is their two numbers. They're all like, this is art and science. This business is art and science. If you're all art, no science, you look like an eccentric psycho. Nobody knows what the hell you're talking about. If you're all science and no art, you're freaking lame and nobody wants to listen to you. There has to be a balance, a balance. You know what I'm saying? You guys feel me? There's a dance there. You know, you a little bit of science, a little bit of art, you mingle these things, boom, you get more sales. Okay. So the, the art is the emotion. This is an emotional sale. The science is obviously the numbers and the practical application of the benefits. So you need to identify the problem. Well, what, what's the problem? We already talked about it. They don't have enough. They have the wrong type, but they don't have any at all. And this is what their life is going to look like. So like, if you're having trouble collecting like at least an income protection check, you, you need to go back. I would almost be like, Veronica, take my leads. And I'm going to work on my presentation for two to, I'm going to lock myself in a room. I'm going to get somebody that's closing deals right now. Veronica, somebody, I need somebody to sit down with me and rework my presentation because you're burning through leads. Like if you can't, if you're having trouble like doing, especially income protection, like I said, your presentation is so fundamentally mangled beyond anything you should be saying to people. There's something wrong. So when it comes to the benefits, we're like we're very needs-based. Like if you call any of my POS, which my personal retention was 88%, I'm getting nice renewals, very good renewals. If you call any of my POS and you ask them, how much coverage do you have? They'd be like, I, I don't know. You know what they do know when they die? Their funeral's covered. Their income is going to be coming to them for five years, 100% tax-free, and the mortgage balance is wiped off. And they're going to get 100 grand per child in the house. That's what they know. If you're selling dollar amounts of coverage, some slap dick loser, pardon my French, from State Farm or Family First is going to come pulling up in his 2001 Corolla with no hubcaps and his ill-fitting suit. And he's going to come in and he's going to replace your whole life policy with a term. He's going to say, oh, you guys have... You guys have 130,000. Oh, you're paying 289 a month. I could get you the same thing for $40. And all Joe and Mary think is, wow, that's a huge discount. Gas prices are high right now. Oh, replacement. You're getting a replacement notice from home office. And you know what they're getting 10 years from now? They're getting a notice of, oh, your coverage is either going to lapse. So now you got to pay $500 a month or you got to reduce your face amount or you don't get, oh, you had a heart attack last year. Guess what? There's no renewability or convertibility option on the state farm policy. So you're SOL for the rest of your existence. Then they get that notice 10 years from now. You have to have a needs-based presentation that's rooted in the concerns that we address for these people. Number one is final expenses. People do, I, I don't even really talk about, like, I've got clients that if you showed them the free, like, how much is this worth? They'd be like, I don't know. I just take it to the funeral director and they handle it. That's, that's all they need to know. So Joe and Barry, do you guys have any idea how much the average funeral costs right now? Yeah, about, uh, what'd you say, Joe, eight? Ah, it's a little bit higher, man. Look at gas prices. It's closer to about 15 grand. Closer to about 15 grand. So I don't know if you're like most Americans. I don't need to know about your guys' personal finances in that much detail. But what I can tell you is this. 87% of Americans have less than $3,000 in savings. Isn't that crazy, guys? 87% of Americans would be screwed if they had a major car repair bill or a medical bill. 87 so I don't know if you're like most Americans, but most Americans don't even have three grand laying around. If, and, and Joe Mayer, let me ask you a question. If you have savings and investments, what does that set aside for? Children's education, good. What else? Retirement, yeah. You didn't set it aside to die, right? Okay, well, that's where this comes in. So what we're going to, what not, hey, I would like to, not maybe today, not, no, what we're going to set up today, what we're going to get you set up with today is called the freedom of choice. 
Now, this freedom of choice, what's great about this is you can take this to any funeral home in the United States, anywhere. That's why they call it the freedom of choice, because you got the choice, right? Now, this works like a blank check. So between us, it's going to be worth a little bit more than 15 grand. What we're going to do for you today is, Mary, we're going to get you one for 30,000. And Joe, we're going to get you one for 30,000. You guys know why we're going to get it a little bit higher? Unexpected cost. Yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah, for sure. Here's the real reason. There's this thing that's happening in the economy right now where everything's increasing in price. What's that called? Inflation, right? So you guys are in your 40s, 50s right now, right? So like when you're 70, 80 years old, it ain't going to be 15 grand anymore. It's going to be 30,000. And here's the thing. If you try to get 15 now and the other 15 later, you're either A, not going to qualify for that additional 15 because you're old and we're close to death, medical issues, or B, you're going to pay like $1,000 a month for that coverage. Remember, Joe and Mary, I want to give you a very important lesson. You pay for life insurance with your money, but you buy it with your age and your health. That's a fire line. Write that shit down if you're not saying it. You pay for life insurance with your money, but you buy it with your age and your health. So we're going to get you the inflation package. So the way it works, it works like a blank check. Now, Joe, you're so Mary. Joe, I'm sorry, you're dead. Okay, so Mary, you guys have been married 15 years. You got two kids together. This is your best friend. You might want to choke them out sometimes, right? But it's still your best friend. So 15 years, best friend's gone. You're going to walk into the funeral home and you're not going to tell him what this is worth. Why? What do you think he's going to do? Yeah. You're going to get, you know, Bruins logo, laser engraved on there, gold bars on the casket. We don't want that. We just want the basic, right? So we're going to negotiate for the lowest possible price. Let's say it costs 14 grand. 14 grand part of our A plus rating because we work the police, the firefighters, the teachers, the, the veterans, we pay out immediately. Three to five business days, that funeral director is going to have a check, which by the way, if they get the balance within 30 days, technically they'll give you a discount. Fun fact. The remaining $16,000 balance is going to go to you, Mary, in the form of a check, 100% tax free. So Joe, let me ask you a question. As the man of the house and the provider, how important is it for you to have your final expenses covered in the event that you die and your wife is left with a $14,000 bill? Very important, right? Mary, how, how much better are you going to sleep tonight knowing that this major concern for most Americans is completely covered for you by the freedom of choice? Awesome. That's what I thought. All right, your next benefit. Which, uh, which part, Veronica? As the man of the house. Hold on, I'm going to record it. Go ahead. As the man of the house, Joe, don't you agree with me that it's important that you make sure that if you die tomorrow, that your wife doesn't get an unexpected bill she can't handle for $16,000 from the funeral home? Doesn't that make you feel a little bit more comfortable as a provider? Awesome, man. I thought so. And then Mary, going to sleep tonight. Isn't it good knowing that you've got that security blanket that you won't have to worry about scrounging up 16 grand, go fund me, spaghetti dinner, things like that to pay for his funeral? All right, that's what I thought, guys. Well, tie down. Yep, tie down. That's right. Should be benefit, tie down, benefit, tie down, benefit, tie down. So next, income protection. My goodness, if you can't sell this, what I was talking about before, maybe you should go work for family first. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> so, maybe you should go. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So maybe you should go, maybe, I don't know, sell window cleaning product or something, because this is the easiest thing in the world. So the income protection. So Joe, you said you're making what, $4,500 a month right now? Okay. So what is that, $2,250? You said bi-weekly? All right. So Joe, I want you to think about this. Mary, you too. This morning when you woke up, did you like check to see if your heart was still beating? No, of course you didn't. You just expect it to, right? Because if it stopped, you'd be dead, right? So we just expect, boom, 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 boom. That heart just beats, right? Pumps the blood through the rest of the body. Joe, you know what's cool, man, is you're kind of like that heart. You're like that heartbeat. Every two weeks, that 2250 comes in. Mary, what are some of the bills that Joe's income pays for? The mortgage payment, the heat in the winter, the electricity, school for the kids. Little Billy likes to play hockey. That's expensive. God bless you. Equipment, tournaments for Billy. What else? 
the food, the grocery, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So my concern and the reason why they wanted me to sit down with you guys today is that Joe, there's going to come a point, there could come a point where all, this could be tomorrow, could be next week, could be now. I hope it's not soon, but we're, none of us are God. So there's going to come a point where you're not here anymore. You're gone. You're dead. And that income that we took for granted, that's cut off forever. And that's an adjustment, Joe, you will not be here to make because you're dead and Mary couldn't possibly make. And you know what? That income stops coming in from work. You know what work is going to send you, Mary? A sympathy card and flowers. But you know what they're not sending you next month, next week? Is this $22.50. So now what's scary is Billy and Sam are not only going to lose dad because dad's dead, but they're going to lose mom because... Mary, let me ask you, what are you going to have to go do 80 hours a week? Work. And now grandma or the government's raising your kids. You're probably going to have to move out of this district. You guys got a pretty nice school. I know taxes here are high. How are you going to afford this when he's gone? You're going to have to move to a less desirable neighborhood, less desirable schools. Dad's dead. Mom's working 80 hours a week. Let me ask you a question, Joe. Is that the kind of situation you want to put your family in? I want to ask you, I want to ask you all, are you saying this with your mouth to these people's earballs? You need to be this serious. You need to be this serious. Well, Joe, the good news is, Mary, the good news is this. Joe, we might not be able to replace you financially because you're like, that's like a financial heart attack, right? You're the heartbeat. You're gone. Boom. That's, I don't know what we're going to do. We might not be able to replace you emotionally because that'd be weird, <laughs> but we can replace you financially, Joe. This is what we're going to do. This is my favorite part of the program. On top of that $30,000 freedom of choice, this is what we're going to do. We are going to send you and the kids, Mary, a check every single month for $4,500, 100% tax-free for five years. Now, Joe, if you thought that funeral protection was important, how important is it? Like man to man, Joe, and if you're a woman, you can't say that, obviously, but like one provider to another, Joe, you could say, how important is it to make sure that when you die, Mary doesn't have to go work 80 hours a week and somebody else is raising your kids. They got to move out of the house, lose their friends, lose their school district. How important are you going to sleep tonight knowing that in the event that Joe dies? Stop saying past. Die dead. Get used to saying it. Okay. None of this flowery bullshit. Okay. Dead and died. So Joe dies. Your income isn't, his income isn't cut off forever. We're able to replace that income. How much better are you going to sleep at night knowing that security blanket is there? That's what I thought. And then you can do the same thing with any other benefits that you want to review with. Boom, bang, boom. Okay. Now, this is the bread and butter close that. Personally, I believe if you don't add this in, you just try to bake some bread with no yeast. You ain't going to get bread, okay? So this is what I say in every single house. Yes. So Joe and Mary, to recap, we have both of your final expenses covered. Two freedom of choices worth 30000 a piece. Joe, can you remember, can you refresh me as to why we got them worth 30000 a piece? You nailed it, man. Inflation. That's right. That's right. What happens when you try to get these benefits later on in life? You guys remember? Mary, you got it. You might be sick and you might not qualify. What's the other reason? I'll give you, okay, I'll tell you guys. They're going to be more expensive because remember, you pay for life insurance with your money, but you buy it in your age and your health. You're never going to be younger or healthier than you are right now today. Okay. So we got both your funerals covered against inflation too. Joe, we also have five years of your income protected. So Mary, let me remind you on top of that $30,000 freedom of choice, we're going to send you $4,500 a month, every single month for five years, 100% tax-free. Next, we have the mortgage balance covered. 
$120,000 mortgage balance. We threw some accidental on that, if you remember, because statistically speaking, if you're going to die before that's paid off, it's probably going to be in an accident. Side note, I use accidental a lot because it keeps the program cheaper, keeps it within the price range that we can execute. We got both the kids, two Head Start programs, $25,000 apiece, giving them a great start in life. We got the GIO on there. You remember what that does, Joe? Yeah, essentially, that's right. They could get more insurance coverage with no medical questions. We also added the waiver of premium on both your policies, meaning that if you've ever become disabled, you don't have to pay for them anymore. Company foots that bill. Terminal illness rider as well. You got all the bells and whistles. Now, here we go, gang. This is, this is the, here it is. Here's the secret sauce, okay? Now, Joe and Mary, most families in your situation have a program like this set up. The problem is, okay, that they're typically, they don't have the union discount like you guys do. So they're paying on the open market $500 to $700 a month. This is, comp this is the Platinum Protection Program. It's say whatever you want to say. This is the Platinum Protection Family Program. So they're paying $500 to $700 a month for this. The good news is, because you're part of the Teamsters. The good news is because your brother Ned sponsored you. The good news is because you decided to request a child safe kit. The good news is because you requested a will kit. Doesn't matter. The good news is because you're part of the Teamsters, you get this at the union negotiated rate, the same rate that our police, firefighters, and veterans get it at. So for you guys, it ain't going to be five to $600 a month. For the whole family, everybody combined, it's going to be a small monthly investment of 289.42. I didn't think that that would be a big deal. My concern is that you can even qualify for this because it's very difficult to qualify for. And what do we do? You do not stop. You do not pause. You do not ask them if it is comfortable. You don't do any of that shit. You assume the sale and you roll into the medical questions. If you pause there, you're going to get your head cut off, typically. You roll into the medical questions. You know what that is? That's called a takeaway. It's called a takeaway. Everybody wants what they can't have. So you provide that take. So I'm not even sure about that. I'm not worried about the 289. I'm concerned of whether or not you guys can even qualify. So let me ask you, any Alcoholics Anonymous, you've been advised to go to AA, any DUIs, felonies, if you got any drugs in your system, not otherwise prescribed, blah, 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 fly planes. First, you should have the first. But not at school. Yeah. You, might you should that. have the first yeah, four know. medical yeah. questions memorized. Okay. The reason why you want to have those memorized is because typically when you click out of the needs analysis into the, the actual app, what's it do? It loads. And then you're like sitting there like, hi. <laughs> yeah, it's just weird. You know what I'm saying? You don't want that. You don't want that awkward silence. So you want to be able to roll right into those medical questions. Okay, we got a little bit of time left. So you should go through all the medical questions, doctor's information. I like to go to height and weight after that. So I know I'm not dealing with a T406. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can literally roll them down a hill. You don't want that. Okay, you want to check the height and weight, make sure that they're insurable from that standpoint. Then from there, I like to do beneficiaries. And this is the way I do. I want to give it to them. It's kind of like if you've ever driven a car, the way they sold me my Maserati, this is how they sold me my Maserati because I'm a buyer. The, drive, the guy said, get in it and start it. And he said, hit that sport mode button. As soon as I heard that exhaust, I wrote him a check. You want to give them the money. Give it to them. So Joe, Mary, so Joe, if you die, and I don't say a lot of, this is what a lot of rookies do, is they'll be like, I'm, I'm sure you want Mary to be your beneficiary. Okay, click, 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 click. No, Joe, when you die, who do you want the $30,000 freedom of choice, the five years of income protection and the mortgage protection to pay out to? Who do you want that to be? Who do you want, what, whose name do you want to have on those checks? Whose name do you want to have appear on those checks? <laughs> oh, man, I've never even said that in the house. I think that's great. Add that in. i got to remember that. Just made that up. 
Whose name do you want to have on the checks? Mary. Okay, good. I was afraid I was going to see a, a, a live divorce or something like that here. I'm glad you picked Mary. All right, now, if you guys were both going to die in a common car accident, who would you want both of your freedom of choice, income, and mortgage protections to pay out to? I think between the two of you, we're looking at like, wait, a little, little over a half a mil. Your kids? All right, great. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do all children equal. It's going to be held in a trust until they, now listen to me. I know it's been an hour, but you got to hear me out here. We're going to do, we're going to fly through this and do the check. And then we're going to have to continue this next week. What was I saying? Shit. Okay. Uh, so who do you want this all to pay out to? It's a little over half a million dollars. Okay. So all children equal. It's going to be held in a trust until they turn 18. Here's the thing. Little Billy is six and, and Freddie is 11. You both die. Uh, I think they're smart kids, but they're not going to like know to call mommy and daddy's insurance agent. All right. So this is what we need to do. I'm going to list them as the beneficiaries. Nobody else could ever touch their money at any point in time for any reason, but we do need to do this. I need to designate an emergency contact, somebody that you trust more than anybody in the world that would help them access this money in the event that you guys both died. I need somebody to call because if you guys both die, all we see is you stop paying. That's it. Then it lapses. Then your kids don't get the half a million dollars. So who do you, okay, your sister, Sarah, do me a favor, call her right now. I'm going to get her on my schedule and make sure that she understands what you guys have and how it works. You just rolled a beneficiary off of a $289 check. Congratulations. That's going to be a 90% closing ratio. If you're not rolling referrals off of sales, that's why you've never sniffed 10, 15, 20,000 in a week. You should be rolling referrals off of these sales, all right? So get the rest of the shit on the app and let's do the check and then we're done because I got to run this group. Okay, so Joe and Mary, looks like everything checks out. Here we got, got the entire app filled out. Now this is how they have it set up, okay? Basically the way they have this set up is they do this, they handle this electronically. You get to pick the day of the month and that's the day that that investment, the 289.42, is going to be handled for your family. Okay. This gives you a 7% annual discount, too, by the way, saves you some money and prevents your policy from lapsing. So, what I need you to do is number one, pick the day. Which day of the month would you like this to be handled? The 14th. Great. Perfect. That works. Okay. Now, what I need you to do is I typically have what, what who do you guys bank through? Bank of America. Okay. I usually, I'll have the routing for that. What I need you guys to do is verify your checking information for me. So go ahead and grab me a check or pull up your app on your phone. Uh, but I'm going to need that 16 digit number to make sure that uh, we finalize your product or your program for you today. So go ahead and grab that for me. Notice I did not say taken out payment draft, nothing. What day do you want the investment handled for your family? Never say payment, never say draft. Those are scary words to people. Scary, right? And you know what you do? Last thing for today is you sit there. I'm not fluent in Spanish, but I think it's Sierra La Boca. Shut your mouth. <laughs> you got to be quiet. There's going to be an urge because this is what they're going to do. If you're a good closer, this is how nearly every presentation is going to end. Everyone. Oh, well, honey, I don't, are we doing this today? Are, are we doing this today? Well, I don't know. You're the one that makes the money. So, so, I mean, you run the checkbook and, well, you're the one that makes the money. So, I mean, I don't know. Well, I mean, well, you saw what happened to Ted. I mean, we have been talking about this for a little bit. Yeah. I mean, if you think you can do it, I, I could probably find a way to squeeze it in. Well, okay. Well, I, th I think we should. Great. Sounds good. Guys, go ahead and grab that checking account information for me and I'll get this finalized for you. I'm going to give you a conditional receipt, blah, 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 blah. What people will do is they're having that conversation and then you open your big flappy trap, right? And you start trying to resell them on it. So remember guys, it's a blah, blah, blah. And then you blow it. You blow it. You just, you have seen these. I can remember I did this in my fourth presentation ever. It's a hundred. I'll never forget it because of, of the physical pain. 
It was a $178 check. I had these guys close. They're doing that conversation. And I started to run my mouth. And my field trainer at the time, Casey Kunash, wore wingtip shoes. And this house was covered in dog shit all over the floor. He didn't take his shoes off. And he wound up underneath the table and wham, right into my shin to the point where I jumped and I had tears in my eyes. And I'll never forget that lesson. Never forget that lesson. I never talk until you get hit with the direct objection. Until they say, we can't afford this right now. We want to think about this. Nothing. You say nothing. Let them go. And then you handle that objection really quick. Because we don't have much time. In fact, no time at all. You sit back and you relax. And you say, this is going to blow your mind. You say the words on the piece of paper that would, the company gave to you to say. That's how you close. All right? Cut. Okay. That's all I got for today in terms of time. I got to run this three o'clock overview. So I'm going to stop the recording. Veronica, I'll send this to you afterwards. And if you guys could hop out for me, I'd appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Thank Mike. You so much.